in this video we're going to start to display the data labels based on the value so if it's a positive value it will be shown at the very top and if it's a negative value it will be shown at the very bottom of the bar and you can see here if it's a zero which is considered a positive value in that case it's just a top as well so let's start to do or explore how to do this so let's look at how we can show the data labels and their position based on a positive or negative value. So the first thing what we need is to get a default code, which you can find here in chartjs3.com getting started. So I'm going to scroll down here, copy this entire chunk of code. And if you want to understand what this code does, make sure to watch this specific video that explains it all. I'm going to paste this all in here. And once I did that, what I want to do as well is to get the title and update this title here save this refresh there we are so now we have this the next thing what i want to do here is to get the uh, data labels plugin library so i'm going to, to go to cdnjs.com search for charges plugin data labels and you will get here the latest version which is version 2.0.0 copy this one here the script tag and once we have that i'm going to paste that in here what is very important is the JavaScript library first of Chart.js and then afterwards the data labels plugin. And the reason why is because the Chart.js library has certain values and variables that needs to be loaded first because this Chart.js plugin is dependent on this JavaScript library or Chart.js library. So once we have this in the right order, what I need to do as well is to register or activate the plugin. So comma here in the options. And then here we say plugins and we want to make here a bracket then we say here chart with capital c data with capital d and labels so chart data labels and l with capital l so now we have this here and this works all very nice and start to show so what i want to do now is just to get a random data here so i'm going to make this negative positive negative positive so we have some dummy data and then here maybe a number zero save that refresh there we are so what happens now by default it will just be positioned in the very center which is wonderful but that's not what we want we want to push this here at the very top and that one at the very bottom so to do this what i need to do here in the options i'm going to say plugins curly braces and then what i want to do here is i want to use the object because we have now this specific uh, charges plugin data labels we are now allowed to use the data labels object so that is why we have this javascript library of data labels or why we inserted that one in there so now we have this here and what i want to do or what i want to work with is two specific items number one the anchor which basically controls the position if it's on the top where exactly and number two it will be eventually the alignment we're going to put it in the center, bottom, or top. Or so let's start to do with uh, the anchor first. So we're going to say here, anchor, and just to make sure you understand what this is, I'm just going to use here certain options. So we have here the end option. So if I save this here, refresh, what happens? It goes here now at the very end. And then what we also have is the start option. And what does that mean is basically, We'll push it at the very bottom so once we have this what i want another one and later on i'm going to work on that so don't worry about that we're going to get back on that so i'm going to do alignment the alignment will eventually push us down below or up so what we're going to say here is for example here that we can put in top this is a string value as well save that and you can see here we'll push it a bit up so what i want to do now is alignment to push here down at the bottom so there we are. So what we really need to do is basically two things. We need to have it if the value is positive, I want to push basically these two to the end and top. But if it is a negative, I want to push it as what we have here, which is a start and bottom. So if I put it here, a end and top, save, then you can see we're now at the very top. So this works, but what I need to do now is I need to loop through this and basically create an array and our array needs to be dependent of the value. So we need to extract these values and then automatically create them. 
So for that, we're going to use a callback. What I'm going to do here, just so I just comment this out. I'm going to start all over again. We say here anchor, and then here the anchor will have a callback here. So we say here context. This is a parameter. And if we are talking about callback, I'm talking about function. Normally it's like this. We could do a function like this. But in ES6, we have these uh, arrow expression functions. So we're going to use that. And then basically in here, I'm going to create an array. And what I want to do in the array is just only one thing. Get a top or get a bottom. Or sorry, for the anchor, it's end or start. That will be for the anchor, end or start, depending on our value. If our value is positive, we need to use end. If our value is negative, we need to use start. So how do we do this? Well, for that, I want to show you the callback or this parameter here that we use in our callback. So if I save this now, refresh, open up developer tab, you can see here we get all of these objects here, and then you can see here the information. And what information I want is basically the values here. In the data set, we have here the data, and then we have all of this here. And all I want is basically to know, are we positive or negative? And if ever we are, in that case, we create an if statement, show this or show that. So what I'm going to do here, or not only we're going to create an if statement, we need to push that in an array. So it's an if statement with a push in the array. This is very important, because an if statement will not work here without the array, because this one needs an array value to do this. So what I'm going to do here is the first thing. Let's first grab this data here. Or how do we get this here? Well, basically here, data set dot data. So we're going to say here, this data set dot data. If I save this now and refresh, we get now the entire array. So that is fine, but I don't want this. What I want to do here is basically create a if statement. And that if statement will eventually say, positive or negative, but that would mean that we need to create first an array where we're going to put in the value. So what I'm going to do here is a constant, and this will be called our anchor array, and this array is blank. Nothing in here. And that's how we're going to use push array. Push array basically means we're going to push a value into the array or insert the value in the array. And it will be always added at the very end of the array. Well, since the beginning it's blank, that means there's no value, so the first one will be here, and then the next one that we push it will be in the second position, exactly in the same order as what we have here, so then we don't have to think deeply on how to structure the array correctly, because we'll automatically structure it. So, enough about the talking, let's start to work on it. So what I'm going to do here now is an if statement, and then what we're going to do here, the if statement will have two things. We need to get here, I realize, before I even go ahead here, I need to get here, the index. So how do we do that? Well, basically, we can just console log here. Let's do a console log. And just get here the context again. Save that. Refresh. Click on that. And then you can see here the data index. And that's the one we need because the data index indicates here index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. All right. So the reason why 6, because we have 7 elements, but an array in JavaScript is zero base counting. So we have this here. If I do this here now, we get all the index here. All right, so we grab all of this. So here, if you want to get the array value, what we need is then basically this number here, put that in there. So if I save this here, we grab here now all the values. So now we can create the if statement, and I'm going to remove this now here. And this if statement will say the following. I'm going to grab if this, value here and then we're going to say here equal is equal or, or but larger or equal to zero in that case what I want to do here is in the anchor array I'm going to say a dot push and what I'm going to push well we're going to push here the end value so else so if that is not the case so it is not a positive value in that case, I want to use the anchor, and then we say here, at the start. So if I save this, and if I do now a console log, and all I want to do now is to grab the anchor, and I will remove this or comment this out, we don't need this now, save that, refresh, you can see here we have this, all right, we have this, did it push correctly? Yes, we have them. 
So what I want to do here now, although I was expecting it all to be nicely together, but it doesn't matter. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab this and just say here, return. We are in the if statement correctly, yes. All right, return the anchor. So let's see if this works nicely. Save that, refresh. All right, so this works now nicely. It will read it. Although I was expecting an array being pushed in here, but for some reason it just shows the, it loops through it only for every single item. But that's all right. That's acceptable because you can see here it is working nicely. So now, same methodology for the alignment. So put a comma here. I'm going to change this here to align. I'm going to do exactly the same, except here, everything that is anchor will be replaced with align. And then here, we're going to say here, not end, but top. And here's not start, but bottom. So if I save this now, refresh, and there we are. So basically now, we have our item here, and this works nicely. So you can see here, all the values are now neatly being organized. So if you like these kind of videos and maybe you want to learn more about the data labels plugin, I would highly recommend you to check out my data labels plugin series, which covers over 19 different videos here, all about the plugin itself. And it's very useful because it covers everything which you need to know about the plugin.